Your lawyers will be here in the morning, court appointed. First thing they'll tell their clients to do is keep quiet. That means we have until tomorrow morning to get confessions. The defense saying Carol will be more willing to speak to a woman than someone she's familiar with. There's no time to bring in an expert, so I thought of you. I don't understand. I want you to get her to sign a confession. I don't know how to do that. Put her at ease. Get her talking. Whatever you do, don't let her see you're afraid of her. Well, I'm not afraid of her. She's a little girl. She helped him kill 11 people, including a child. They held hands while they did. I don't know. I don't think I can do this, Mom. Yes, you can. You have to. sheriff's wife. The sheriff asked me to come see you so you'd have a familiar face around. Still don't feel like talking? But if you don't talk to me, they'll never let you see Charlie. You think they'll let me see Charlie? No, that wasn't so hard, was it? Will they really let me see him? I doubt it. I'm sorry, I just wanted to get you talking. Is he okay? Charlie's fine. He's in a cell on the other side of the building. You promise he's okay? I promise. They beat him up when they arrested him. And he had a gun. Even after they got the gun away, they kept on hitting him. It's okay if you want to cry, Kim. You can cry with me. I never cry. Well, you must cry sometimes. Nope. I guess I was born without tears. Well, isn't that something? <laughs> What's the matter? I make you nervous? Of course not. You're scared of me, aren't you? No! Why don't you have some soup? I don't want any. You must be hungry. I'm not. What's going to happen to us now? Who's us? Me and Charlie. You probably shouldn't think of him that way anymore. You two don't exactly have a healthy relationship. How would you know? You murdered 11 people together. Got no proof? Did Charlie tell you to say that? No one told me to say anything. I say what I want. Now answer my question. What's going to happen to us? We'll 
he'll have a trial. What about Charlie? He'll have a trial too. At the trial, will there be a judge and a jury and all that? Of course. And a court artist with a sketch pad? Probably. Do you think... What? You think my parents would be at the trial? Your parents are dead, Carol. You and Charlie killed them. Your little sister, too. I'm not admitting to anything. You're a little confused right now, aren't you? I'm not used to being without Charlie. Yeah, but it would be better if I could see him. Don't worry about Charlie right now. You don't understand! Charlie is the most important thing that ever happened to me! He makes me happy. So happy I can't think straight. So happy I feel sick, like I might throw up. Like I'm dry, like I can't. Like I can't even breathe. You had someone like that, you'd understand. He's everything to me.
I wonder why. He would have shot us. Now Bob's got to defend himself. Whatever you say, Jesse James. You gotta look your best when the lawyers come. When's that happen? Morning. Do I get to see Carol then? No, you don't get to see her at all. I'll see her once we're acquitted. You won't be acquitted, Charlie. Oh yeah? You don't have a single witness. We've got Carol. Then you've got nothing. She didn't resist when we arrested her. Seems like she's almost happy to see us. What's that supposed to mean? What do you think it means? Screw you, old man! You watch it! You try that again, I'll call on the rest of the boys. They'd love to have a crack at you. Yeah, I bet they would. They're jealous of me. The kid everyone laughed at, now part of one of the most famous love stories in history. Like Romeo and Juliet, Jim Stark and Judy. Who? Rebel Without a Cause, haven't you seen me? No. You're really missing out. <laughs> Jim Stark. Charlie Stark Weather. <laughs> My name's got a real ring to it. Not like your name, Merle Comer. And what's your wife's name? Gertrude, right? Merle and Gertrude Connup. You trying to make me mad? How's that gonna help you? <laughs> You're jealous, too. You wish your face was on the front of the papers. I was in the papers once. Oh, yeah? I was Nebraska Sheriff of the Month. What month? July. Congratulations. I'm gonna be straight with you, Charlie. Because I know your dad, because I remember when you were just a boy, before you went down this road. I want you to sign this confession. It's been typed up for you real nice. All you have to do is sign it. I'll sign it. But you have to do something for me in return. What's that? Let Carol go. I'll sign anything you want if you let her go. I can't do that. Now I won't sign it. You're going <laughs> to sign it. The only question is if you're going to do it right now or if I'm going to have to beat the crap out of you first. You already did that. I could do a lot worse. I can take it. Why are you doing this, Charlie? I'm doing it for her. You have until 3 a.m. Mm. I'm in love, and that's a funny thing. And I am not afraid. So try to break me and make me suffer. I can take it as long as I have her. And I have her. And you've got nothing on me. You've got nothing on me.
do you think you're doing? I'm drawing you. Why? I like to draw. No, I mean, out of everyone in this theater, why did you choose me? I don't know. I think you chose me because I'm the only girl on this balcony who's alone. No. I chose you because you're the prettiest. It's a little creepy. I'm sorry. For your information, I don't usually go to movies alone. But this is my favorite movie. It's mine too. Really? This is my fifth time. to draw under and it's dark in here. During the daylight scenes, it's just bright enough. Can I look? No. I'd rather not. I have the right to draw of me after all. so they call me trash. And I hate the boys at school because they grab at me in the halls and when I push them away, they call me slut. And I hate the teachers because they're pretty much full of shit. You got to foul mouth for a girl. Screw you, creep. By the way, I lied before. I do go to movies alone all the time. So do I. What a coincidence. We're both losers. <laughs> My name's Charlie Starkweather. What's yours? Carolyn Fugit. That's Carol with an I. Cut it out now. I'm warning you. Where do you put the I in Carol? <laughs> <laughs> After the R instead of the O? Yeah. Carol with an I. I like that. <laughs> you know what, Carol with an eye? I'm angry too. Why are you angry? Because the kids at school call me a freak. They say I have wild eyes. They say I walk funny. Spread nasty rumors about me. Are the rumors true? Of course not. I mean, you are kind of creepy. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't know what to say sometimes. Words make a mess in my mouth. I get confused. I don't know. Something happens. I try, but I always fail. And the worst is when I get... When you get what? No. Tell me. You think I'm strange. I already do. Just tell me. Okay. Sometimes I get a death feeling. That's what I call it. What's a death feeling? It's like a kind of hurting. A dull aching inside me. I get it when I'm calling me names. And when I mess things up. When my dad hits me. When I get the death feeling. It feels like, like everything's closing in, like I'm suffocating. There are days when it's so bad I can't fight it. 
on days like that, I want to do something big. I want to kill something. You think I'm crazy? No. Oh, you do, I can tell. God, I shouldn't have said that. Can you just, can you just forget I said that? Okay, I understand. You do? Yes. I don't think you're crazy, Charlie.
I put them in my mouth, and I was about to bite down when he told me to stop. He just wanted to see if I would do it, and I would. I proved it. You ever felt that way about someone, Mrs. Carnot? I did once, I think. About Mr. Carnot? No. When I was younger. Would you eat glass for Mr. Carnot? No. Would he eat glass for you? He would laugh at the idea. Eating glass is nothing to laugh about. No kidding. Charlie shouldn't have told you to do that. He didn't tell me. He asked me. What are you thinking about, Mrs. Carter? Nothing. I'm remembering. Remembering what? Nothing. I'm not going to let you see Charlie. At least not for a very long time. The best thing is to put him out of your mind. I can't do that. You need to try. When I think about not seeing Charlie, it makes me want to die. Well, you don't mean that. Yes, I do! I already miss him so much it hurts. It feels like something cut him into me, that's how much it hurts. You can learn not to miss him. You're wrong. Because no matter what, love never dies. Like the song says. What song? Love Never Dies? Did you know that one? Charlie and I heard it on the radio one time. But we decided that would be our song from then on. It goes like this. The skies are blue And the birds sing Me and you are out dancing. Oh, what can I do? I'm so The Love Never Dies part comes later. I don't know it. I think it's true. Love Never Dies. What do you think, Mrs. Carnot? Do you think that's true? Oh, 
talking. No confession yet? No. You break her down. She's frightened. She doesn't know who to trust. You get her to trust you. I'm trying. I think I understand her, Mom. Understand her? What do you mean? I understand why she did it. It doesn't make any difference why she did it. Well, I think it does. Guilt is about choice. And I don't think she chose. He did the first murder without her. That's what the paper said. He made the choices and she followed him. You believe that? Yes. And so will the jury. They'll go easier on her if they know he forced her, won't they? He forced her? Did she tell you that? No. But I think I can get her to. The FBI wants two full confessions. They're talking about the electric chair. We can't send her to the chair. She's a little girl. She's a murderess. That's a ridiculous word. She should pay for what she did. How can you be so heartless? There are laws and moral codes, and when they're broken, people should be punished. You weren't always like this. What's that supposed to mean? When you met me, you weren't like this. I have made mistakes, but you forgave me. This is nothing like that. She's a lot like I was, Mom. Don't say that. It's true! Don't say that! I wish you wouldn't always tell me what to do. You were getting worked up. I didn't want you to get worked up. You don't have to tell me to do things all the time. You could ask me. You didn't used to be this hard. You're not like her, Gertrude. You made some mistakes when you were young, that's true. The difference is you only hurt yourself, no one else said I was no good after that, that no one would have me, but you did. That's right. Why? Because you needed me, because I love you. Love isn't the same as need. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. How can you always be so sure of everything? I choose to be sure. I understand how hard this must be for you. You're not used to this kind of work you're starting to feel sympathy for. That's a natural reaction, but you have to fight it. You don't understand. Yes, I do. We've been through a lot together. And I've always been there for you, haven't I? Remember what I said the day I asked you to marry me? What I promised? Someday you'll be old and frail Someday all your words will fail And on that day I'll be standing ready by your side On that day I'll be there to catch the tears that you cry That's what I said held your hand and I said, on some days the world's a violent place and on some days there are truths you have to face, but on those days I promise to lead you the right way, cause I know
There's nothing we can do. That's not true. You know what we can do. I'm sorry. Please, Merle. She's a little girl who made a mistake. She needs us. All right. Listen closely. Get Carol to say he forced her. Get her to put it down on paper and get her signed. Do that and bring it back to me. If anybody ever asks, we never had this conversation. You understand? Yes. I am not heartless, Gertrude. Thank you. expensive than I thought. I'm still waiting for the part about the blood. Okay. The guy behind the counter knew me from school. Said he wouldn't give me the teddy bear on credit. Said I don't give credit to freaks like you. I gave him the death fever. No bad. The worst I ever had. And I, I had my dad's gun with me. I was supposed to take it and get it clean later. So when he laughed at me like that, oh, when he laughed at me, I pulled out the gun and I shot him in the stomach. I shot him three times, Carol. Did you kill him? Cops will be looking for you. Nobody saw it. I don't think anyone knows it was me. Well, we'll find out somehow. That's what cops do. They find out. Send you to jail. No, they won't. I got my car. And I got a full tank of gas. If we start now, we can make it to Mexico by Friday. They'll never find us there. Us? I want you to come with me. This was a beautiful thing we had, Charlie. Why do you have to go make it all ugly? It's not ugly. It's still beautiful. It doesn't feel beautiful. It is beautiful. Even this blood is beautiful. You know why? Because I did it for you. For me? How's that? Because I wanted to get you a gift. I was willing to kill to get you a gift. That's how much I love you. Well, where is it? The teddy bear? Yeah, where is it? I don't have it. What happened to it? It melted. I don't understand. There was blood splattered on it. I didn't want to give it to you like that. I washed it, but it wouldn't come out. So I, I poured turpentine on it. That was a bad idea. The fur began to dissolve. I couldn't give it to you then. It was all messed up. So I poured the rest of the turpentine on it. it melted away to nothing. 
I'm sorry. Don't touch me. I don't think I can be with you anymore, Charlie. But you promised I wouldn't lose you. Things have changed. Where do you go? Home. You can't be. You promised me. Let go of me. You promised. How can you leave me now after all of this? How can you slice my heart out now? I'm gonna slice my wrist. True. that are wrong. 
wrong, that you know are wrong, but they don't feel like they're wrong when you do them? What do you think that means? Is it some kind of a riddle? I think it means you didn't choose to do them. Guilt is about choice. But you didn't feel guilty because you didn't choose to do those things. What do you mean? Well, I think Charlie forced you to do those things. And I think a jury, any reasonable jury, would believe that. Now, if you tell me that, if you sign something that tells me that, I can testify on your behalf. You would do that for me? Yes. And if the jury believes you were forced, you'll probably still go to jail, Harold, but you won't get the chair. What's the catch? There is no catch. You help Charlie, too? No. You're the one I want to help. Oh, and he needs it more. He's probably getting the death feeling right now. Charlie can take care of himself. You don't know what he's like. He needs me. You have to think about yourself now, Carol. I see what you're trying to do, and it won't work. I won't turn against him. I'm not asking you to turn against him. I'm asking you to tell the truth. I'm not admitting to anything. He forced you to help him. You don't know anything about it. He forced you, didn't he? I'm not sure. Like anything anymore. When I was a boy, my father taught me one thing, just one thing. A man must be sure, he said. Just always be sure, he said, that's the way a man should be. When I married her, he taught me a second thing to go with my wedding ring. A man must be hard, he said, keep his eyes on the road. That's the way a husband should be And I'm a hard man now I'm a hard man now Still I wonder how Though I took his advice And I lived his advice Sign? No, I'm not going to. All right. But at 3 o'clock, I give up on waiting. <coughs> That's 20 minutes, Charlie. Don't you think someone will ask why I have so many bruises? You killed 11 people. No one's going to care what happens to you. And you might as well go for it now. Save us trouble waiting around for 20 minutes. No. I'm going to make you wait. Give you 20 minutes to change your mind. I won't. We'll see. You have a cigarette for while we're waiting? I don't smoke. Someone around here must smoke. You're not getting a cigarette, Charlie. Then I'll just imagine I'm smoking. I have a very active imagination. In case you're wondering, I'm smoking a camel. It's my favorite brand. How's it taste? Fantastic. Maybe I'll have one, too. Thought you didn't smoke. I think I could make an exception for an imaginary cigarette. Are you going to bum one? <laughs> bum one? I've got the pack. you got to ask me for one. Um, can I have a cigarette? Yes, of course, good sir. I 
how is it? It's, uh, it's okay. Okay. The proper answer is terribly flavorful, my good sir. You need to work on your imagination. You've never been my strong suit. Maybe you should watch more movies. I watch a lot of movies. I haven't gone to the movies in a long time. Then what do you do for fun? I don't know, I like driving. You like to drive, Charlie? Sure. My car's a piece of crap, though. What kind of car do you have? Well, there's my patrol car. That's a Ford, of course, and uh, I got a Cadillac. A Cadillac? No way! Painted a red. You're lying! I never lie. Wait a second now, that's a lie right there. Everyone lies sometimes. I don't. My father taught me it's never right to lie, and I believe that. Certain kind of lies can be right. Like what? Like, like lying to protect someone. Don't you ever do that? No. What about with your wife? I would never lie to her. Come on, there must have been times you kept something from her. Something you don't want her to worry about. When Carol and I were in the motel room, she heard the sound of keys in the door. But when she asked me, did I hear something, I said, no, I lied. And it was the right thing to do, because I didn't want her to be scared. You know what, Charlie? I did lie to Mrs. Carnop once. About what? I killed a man. You killed a man? A couple of years ago. He was a drifter robbing the drugstore. Had his hand in his jacket. I thought he had a gun. He didn't. But it was too late. And I didn't tell her. When I came home that day, she asked how work was. I just said it was fine. Why didn't you tell her? I didn't want her to worry, like you said. <laughs> what was she worried about? You'd already done it. I thought it might upset her. Did you think she wouldn't love you anymore if she knew? Maybe. <laughs> you didn't need to worry about that. I told Carol a lot of bad things I've done. And a lot of bad things I felt that she's never turned against me. Because if you really love someone, you forgive them anything. It's a nice idea, Charlie, but it's never that easy. I want to ask you something, Sheriff. But you have to tell me the truth. I told you, I don't lie. Except that one time. What do you want to ask me? What did it feel like when you killed that guy? Try not to think about it. It felt terrible. Didn't feel terrible to me. Didn't feel terrible at all. I think there's something wrong with me. Something really wrong. I never should have done those things. What things, Charlie? What things did you do? Nothing. I did nothing. It's three o'clock now. Make this easy on yourself. I told you before, I'll sign if you let Carol go. I can't do that. It's the only way I'll do it. It's not going to happen. Then I'm not going to sign. You can do whatever you want to me. I can take it. My dad's beaten me up plenty of times. Please, Charlie. I'm ready. All right. I'm not afraid right now. You know why? Because you're not real. Like the cigarettes we smoke, none of it's real. This jail isn't real. These walls aren't real. Nothing's real. Right now, I'm still at the motel off the highway. I'm lying in bed with Carol in my arms. And I'm dreaming this. It won't be long before I wake up and I'm with her. And we get up and take a bath together and, and I'll wash all this away. I wish you didn't make me do this. Oh, what was that? Did you hear that? Well, I didn't hear anything, Carol. No. No. It sounds like someone's being hurt. Oh, it's nothing. Why don't you try to get some rest? You must be tired. I can't sleep right now. Well, you should try. No. Oh. What if I sing you a lullaby? Would that help? I'm too old for that. Oh, you're never too old for a good lullaby. No. There it is again. It's nothing. No.
so light that she might float away. Float like a balloon, look down on your life, watch as you suffer. See, nothing is real, so try not I remember when you were a baby, Charlie. You had such big eyes. Father and I laughed about those big eyes of yours. Gertrude and I never had any children. It's a big thing, creating life. Why would you want to take it away? Because death is the only thing as big as our love. That makes no sense. It does to me. just like this. But then the police came to the door. And they arrested us and took us to jail. And the sheriff beat me up real bad. It's only a dream, Charlie. Police haven't caught us. We're in a hotel room off the side of the highway. We're on our way to Mexico. In my dream, we were all over the papers. They said we killed 11 people. We did, Charlie. The person had a dream. Oh, shit! Shit, shit! Calm down! Uh, I'm getting the death feeling. I keep seeing their faces! Charlie! I feel this 
disgusting. I need to get clean. It's okay, Charlie. It's gonna be okay. It's not okay. It, it will be. Here. Let me wash you. You want to wash me? Sure. It'll be nice. I don't know. It's, it's like, I don't know, like I'm a little kid or something. You are a kid. No way, I'm an outlaw. Whatever you say, Al Capone. This is kind of nice. Told you. You think someday when you're old and frail and you can't take care of yourself anymore, you think I might wash you like this? I don't know. Maybe. We live that long. Don't talk like that. We're halfway to Mexico. We're still in Nebraska. It's a start. Oh, barely outside of Lincoln. Oh, God, I'm getting in again. Charlie, Dude. you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. like you're all clean now, so what do you say we get you back in the bed? Does that sound good? Yeah. Good. Let's do that. I think the motel clerk is on to us. No way. When we sign fake names in the book, I think he knew they were fake. How would he possibly know? Maybe you recognize us from the papers. He didn't recognize us. I think I should kill him. No, Charlie. I have to kill him. No, no, we're killing him. I have to. No, Charlie, let go. What if he knows? He doesn't know. Everything's going to be fine. Shh.
do anything for you? Would you do anything for me too? Yes. Would you eat glass for me? Yes, I would. Really? I would eat glass for you, Charlie Starkweather. tell you something, Carol. Before I married Merle, there was a boy I felt about in much the same way you feel about Charlie. I couldn't breathe when I was with him either. The same as you. But then I found out I was pregnant. And I told him, and the next day, he left town. I thought I couldn't live without him. I thought I didn't want to. I missed him with every piece of myself. And when my mother took me to get the operation, I missed him. And when the doctor told me I'd never be able to have children, even then, I still missed him. But soon after, I met Merle. And I learned to stop missing him. Sometimes I think about that boy. When things are hard with Merle, I think about what I had with him, and I remember that feeling. But I see now that though what I had with him was strong, it wasn't good. It was more like sickness than love. I'm sorry he left you. Oh, don't be sorry. Life is like that. You do the best you can with what you have. Even if you're not happy, well, happiness is something you can learn. Are you happy with Mr. Carnock? Not always. But he takes care of me, and I take care of him. And that's a kind of love that's stronger than anything you and Charlie could ever have. I think you're right. I'll do it. I'll write that he forced me. I'm so glad, Carol. Please don't say anything. Just give me something to write with before I change my mind.
thing? I'm not sure. You can choose to be sure, honey. Choose to be sure.
says he forced her. I won't sign the confession you wrote for me, but I'll tell you everything. In my own words, exactly how it happened. We can do that, Charlie. But only do it under one condition. What's that? You let me see Carol before the lawyers come? I don't know if I can do that. It's the only way you'll get what you want. All right. I'll let you see her. Then I'm ready. Before I met Carol, I had nothing. Every night I would lie alone in my bed and I would have the death feeling. And I would imagine slicing open my wrist or hanging myself. Sometimes I would think about hurting other people. The kids at school and my dad. But I wouldn't do it, I was too afraid. And I met Carol, and she was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Catfish hairs and all. She listened when I told her things about myself, and she didn't run away. She kissed me, said it was okay. She made me strong. I still had the death feeling, but I wasn't afraid anymore. When I told her about the first man I killed, she almost left me. But she didn't. She forgave me. When we killed her family, she held my one hand while I held the gun in the other. It was a way of sharing with each other. When we killed her mother, it was like we were getting married. When we killed her stepfather, it was like we were buying a house. When we killed the baby girl, it felt like we were having our own child. They were all like our children in a way. The farmer who I shot in the head, those two kids in the car, the businessman and his wife and the maid and the traveling salesman. All 11 of them. On the last night, I asked her if she'd be glass for me. She said she would. She put the pieces in her mouth and bit down, and suddenly there was blood in her mouth, and I was scared for a moment. But mostly I was happy, so happy that she would do that for me. And later, we heard the sound of the key in the lock and I knew everything was about to change. But I tried to be strong for her like she had been strong for me. Because although I knew there was something wrong with me, something terribly wrong, I also knew it didn't matter because our love was so real and so big that only death, only something as real as death could express how real it was and how unreal everything else would always be. The rest of the world was like a teddy bear melting on a pool of turpentine. And we floated over it all. Finished? I'm finished. You can see her now, but you'll have to be chained to me. All right. Give me your hands.
Carol. Carol. I'm not going to hurt her. I just wanted to tell you that I understand. I know why you told them I forced you. And I forgive you. You do? Of course. You were sick, Charlie. But I'm getting better now. I hope you can get better too. We weren't sick. We weren't in love. You're wrong. Look in my eyes and tell me that. I think you might be right. I'm probably gonna get the chair, Carol. Are you scared? Yeah. Are you getting the death feeling? I'll be all right. I wish I could hold you right now. But you don't love me anymore. I do!